The only words I have to say are pure disarray. That's how I've been feeling after yesterday. Oh, we had to say goodbye to Tink. She was my furry friend, my companion. She was part of the home. She made the home better. I bloody loved that cat. I really did. It's not even been 24 hours and I feel like I need to talk about it. It feels like a, a wound. It feels like I've been wounded like never before. This is my first big loss. I have lost cats before, but this one hits different. She meant a lot to me. She, she was a, not feral cat, she was a rescue cat. She came to this home just before COVID, or a bit before COVID, maybe 2019 she came to this home. And I met Tink when I, I came here and she hated me, she hated everyone because she had a troubled past. She'd sort of been, well, I don't know what she did before her previous owner, because she was a rescue cat, but then she came to us from a home where the kids were treating her wrongly. So she was, apparently she hated men. She hated me. She hated most people. But the thing is she grew to love me and I her and we bonded, we really did. And I. I I bloody love cats and I bonded with her. Ugh. Yeah, fucking sucks. I won't lie. It fucking sucks. And she was a unique cat in many ways. Very unique. So many ways I could not list. And I've had to... I've had to re-record this. I don't know why I even want to record it. I just do. I'm just marching around the house. I, I haven't slept at all because I just felt too wounded to sleep. Too wounded. I just couldn't do it. I, I did try. I lied there. But all I could think about was her. And how she's not here. I couldn't. I just couldn't sleep. And this is where she would be in the morning. She would have been here looking at me, asking for food. Her bowl's here. Her bowl's here. <sighs> Empty. This is her water fountain. Off. Off for the first time. Never, never been off before. It would filter out water. She would sit here. She'd hang out with us. She'd run through the corridor. She'd come in here. She'd scratch the carpet here. She'd go. <laughs> <laughs> I found many a claw in there. She'd go. She'd sit here a lot. Look out the w the window. Obviously, she'd go outside as well. She'd sit out there. She'd climb to the neighbor's garden. She'd sit in front of the telly. She had many spots. Every week or so, she'd um, find a new sleeping spot. And this house was bloody amazing for her. It's got so many layers to it. I still remember the first time that she discovered this room. For a long time, this was off limits to her. And now, well, for, yeah, for a long time, she slept in here. She liked to sleep here. She also liked to sleep in this chair. She took took to this chair as well. <laughs> um, she slept in all sorts of weird places, like down here on that blue on that blue folder. Doesn't even look comfortable, but she liked it. She'd hide underneath these things. She used to like sleeping there. Then there's more sleeping spots upstairs. But yes, I mean, I've I've just recorded 40 minutes of me talking about her, but it just didn't feel right. 
I've I looked through all I've taken so many bloody pictures of that cat because she's just very majestic. She's very majestic. She would oftentimes sleep. This is the nephew's room, which they, they don't really use anymore. I used to actually call this Tink's bed. She'd sleep on it so much. Or she'd be underneath this bed. And I just got so used to looking under the bed, like, where's Tink? Look under the bed. And towards, towards the end, oh, there's so much, there's too much to say. There's too much to say. This is the crash where she'd sleep. We called it the crash. <laughs> and then in the past week or so, she would sleep behind this mirror, very, which was very strange, or underneath our bed. She'd literally underneath. I mean, beforehand, she'd sleep on the bed. But it was almost like a cat door here. She would walk in here and she would just sleep down there. But in the past, I'd say two weeks, oh, this is a bed she didn't really use much. She didn't really use that bed much. But <coughs> in the past few weeks, she spent all of her time with me in here, either on this chair or one of her final spots. She was hiding under the desk there. And then I'd sit here and I'd be able to see her just there. And that, that was nice to know she was there. There's still a bit of her fur here. I'll go down here. Here. But I'm going to leave that there. The thing is that the way it was, <laughs> she would choose a spot that looked uncomfortable, like that. And then Joe would want to freshen it up and make it all comfortable for the cat. And then Tink would just immediately be like, I don't want this anymore. I'm moving to a different spot because you've changed it now. <laughs> yeah, she was very unique. Very unique cat. Oh, but yeah, so basically the vet had found a 10 centimetre tumour in between her kidneys and... It had spread. It was a massive mass on her stomach and it had caused her to start throwing up. And she was being sick almost every day. But the thing is, we took her to a vet, uh, the closest vet we had. We took her there. We've been taking her, you know, for her regular checkups there. Never said anything. They never found anything. I'd say about two weeks ago we went there, maybe three weeks ago, they gave us, they gave her an anti-sickness and they gave her an antibiotic. And what did that do? It did nothing. She kind of, last week, she kind of came back to her old self. She had energy. She was vibrant again, but that lasted about two days. And then since then, she's just been hiding in the office with me, being very lethargic to the point when or well, two days ago at this point, I was basically, I I devoted myself to force feeding her. Well, not force feeding her, but she'd be lying down there in, in the spot and then uh, I would, i just put some food in front of her and I'd say, I'd, I'd try and make it appealing for her. I'd, I'd made a commitment to spend all my waking time trying to feed her up. I wanted to chonk her back up because she'd lost 400 grams of of body weight and she's only like a three kilo cat she was a small cat we used to say she was a micro cat she's not quite that small but yeah it's devastating it is devastating i never felt like this just knowing that she's not here even just knowing that she's not sleeping somewhere it makes the house feel cold and empty. Yeah, and the past 10 days I've been, I've just been capturing her. I've just been capturing her. Um, yeah, and I'm going to run that at the end of this video. Just literally her last 10 days. 
so you can feel her essence. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with this video because now I've recorded this twice. I don't know what I'm doing, I really. I just feel like maybe this is my way of coping. I've been very torn up about it. Uh, if, yeah, like I said at the start, it feels like a wound, like um, something's been stripped from me. Something's been taken from me. Like internally, a wound. I do feel wounded. My furry partner isn't here. And that sucks. But she must have been in a lot of pain. She was um, scratching a lot, over grooming. Over grooming a lot. Um, she had scabs everywhere. And the vet reckons. They said yesterday they reckon that the reason why is because the tumour was pushing against her, causing her discomfort. Yeah. Causing her discomfort. And she was trying to scratch it away. And I, I remember, like, she would... She would over-groom, and I'd just try and... Um, I'd even try and hold her paw and be like, please don't do that. You're hurting yourself. I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep this video, but I'm going to play the clips now of her final couple weeks. Thank you. Who's this then? Tinks let me pick her up really weird. I just picked her up like a machine gun and she let me do it. Do you know where the fuck she was? Can you guess where the cat is? No, she's not under there. She's not there. I found her spot. What are you doing down there?
What's he doing? <laughs> He's a good kitty. He's a good kitty. She's got the vet tomorrow. I'm gonna have an ultrasound. She's been throwing up, found some sick today with a bit of blood in it. The vet's gonna investigate what's going on. But they said that she's got a lump in her thyroid and an unidentified mass or a lump in the abdomen and that's what the ultrasound's for to try and figure out what's going on in her gut but we suspect what i suspect is some sort of kidney disease um yeah she's not doing so well to be honest she's quite lethargic today not eating too much she's been quite tired is she still here? Vet tomorrow? Hopefully we'll figure out what's going on with you, yeah. But you're happy at the minute, aren't you? That's all that matters. Good cat. Yeah. Tink's very hungry this morning because she's not been allowed to eat because she's got an ultrasound this morning and it's the most energised we've seen her. She's been begging for food, but we can't feed her yet. Now she's in here. But I've got some tuna and stuff for her afterwards. We're going to find out what's going on with the cat. Why have you been throwing up? Why have you been feeling ill? Well, she really wants to get out, Joe. She doesn't like her paws yeah, being held. Yeah, I can feel her purring. She's purring. No, I can feel her down here, actually. She's purring. Oh, pick her up and get no, her. No, no, no. She's not purring. She's, not purring. she's so sedated. She's like a little floppy baby. Who's that? Poor cat. Poor innocent creature, that's what I used to say all the time. <laughs> yeah, why did you used to call her that? Apparently she's not innocent. Because she is a poor innocent creature. She's a babe. I'd say that whenever she was starving. What? I'd say, Tinky's starving, she's a poor she's innocent eating. creature. Oh, poor, poor creature, she's starving. That's what I always used to say. Poor innocent creature. Look how wide her eyes are though. Oh, wow, you're vibrating. <laughs> mm. Oh, you're actually purring. Yeah, she recognises who we are. Is she shivering? Yeah, it's probably just the yeah, sedation. You poor innocent creature. <laughs> God's sake. We'll get a frame made with that on it. <laughs> oh, I hope the drugs were good. <laughs> We are gathered here today to celebrate. <laughs> Why do I feel like crying now? <laughs> to celebrate the passing of Ting. And I want to say the word celebrate because it's a positive, well, it's not a positive thing. It's, it's just a part of nature. That fucking dog. It's a part of nature. It's a natural thing to have occurred. And the best thing we can do is celebrate the passing. This is a pseudo-tink. The closest representation we have to her. 
so she's here <laughs> and we have some clippings of her fur and in here we have some of the fur from around the house and one of her claws so parts of her body remain with us and here we have the ashes <laughs> I'm just laughing because I feel like crying so Tink came to us in 2019 she came to this house and she came from a house that she wasn't very happy in <laughs> and she found happiness here she found people that loved her <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yes so <laughs> she was my little companion and she meant a lot to all of us <laughs> And it's weird about her here. <laughs> oh. <sighs> she was a very smart cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to say she was a very intelligent cat. <laughs> even though we caught her one time pouring at the wall by the litter tray, <laughs> thinking she was covering up her mess. She was very agile. Right until the last day, she was jumping around. Um, she's jumping all over us. Um, yeah, she had her spirit with her. And in her last day, she spent it with us. And she was a small cat. Smaller than most cats. But she had a very nice coat. She kept her coat very clean. Um, she looked like she was show ready at all times. Just a little bit of balding at one side, but that doesn't matter. She looked very smart. She was a smart tuxedo cat. Would you like to say anything? No, okay. <laughs> Joe said she was a little tinky. She was my little tinky too. Um, yeah, we do miss her, but that's the way of nature. So in here, there are two envelopes which we have not read or opened. So I'm going to open those and read them out now. <coughs> the first one. There's some things here I'm going to look through. So this is a certificate of individual cremation so it's a, a certificate that just says that that happened and we've got a little card here that was asking for feedback and there's just instructions on how to access the ashes okay not very interesting letter that i will say tink was almost 15 years old we think, so. we, we think she was almost 15 we're not sure how old she was. She was a rescue cat originally. She lived with previous owner. And then she lived with us. But we aren't sure of her uh, actual age. So we've got a lovely letter here. It's called invoice slash receipt. <laughs> so I won't be reading that out. <laughs> it's just a note that says nothing really. So in here are the ashes, you open it and you push to scatter. So she was a house cat, but she did like the garden. She liked being around here, so we're going to spread her here. But she loves sitting out here and she was a very quirky cat, a unique cat. One of the things I thought was quite unique about her, she liked to sleep like this with her paws outstretched. And she had no meow, really. 
She had no meow. She just opened her mouth and sort of her bottom jaw would quiver. And the thing, she wasn't, she liked, she, she liked to be with us and she didn't like outsiders. Yeah. If you weren't in her circle, she didn't like that. Yeah, she... I don't know, I just opened it up. I don't know, it's just strange seeing that this is just a box of ashes. Um, yeah, so... We're going to spread the ashes around here. Yeah, so I'm going to spread a little bit over here with pseudo tink. I'm going to hold one of her, I call these the effigies, one of her furs. And now we're going to spread. <laughs> the one it makes me laugh when I'm going to cry, but we're going to spread her around the garden. I'm going to cover it all because this is going to, the garden's going to thrive. as her spirit enters the garden. Okay, now Joe was going to spread some as well. And you are going to hold the tink. And hold the effigy of fur. I've been spreading her here. So there's another part of the garden here. Joe's going to spread it now. Yeah, spread it there. <laughs> yeah, go on, finish the, uh, finish it off. So, as the sun sets, so does Tink's time in this world, but she will live on in our memories. As much as the cats that I had when I was a kid, I still think about them regularly. And now I will also think of Tink regularly too.